and welcome to Just One More Watch. Have I got some exciting news for all of you today. Remember Neymar, purveyors of top value Rolex and Tudor homages? Well, they've decided that the association with the floppy haired Brazilian diving footballer wasn't necessarily doing them any favours in certain markets. So they have launched a parallel brand, exactly the same watch, just a different name on the dial. And what is that name? Well, I think you better sit down for this one. It's BLWRX. Anyway, apparently it stands for Bolin Watchworks, which is the name of the company that actually manufactures these things. But I must admit, I did a bit of a double take when I opened the packaging this time around. So here follows essentially a re-review. Exactly 12 months ago, I looked at this watch, a big Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller homage, but with the brand Neymar on the dial. At the time, I described it as the beast. One of the best value watches that I looked at at that point on the channel anyway, especially if you buy your watches by the gram. What's in a name? Let's flip the camera and find out. Why did I do a double take when I opened the box then? Well, they've changed the packaging obviously from Neymar because it's a, a new brand. Plain white outer, but look at that. Green inner, looks like a kind of familiar shade of green and it's got RX at the end. That got me twitching a little bit. I mean, it doesn't quite look identical to a Rolex box, but you can see what they were aiming for. But I've made my position on homage watches clear on a number of occasions. As long as it doesn't say Rolex on the dial or Tudor or whatever it is it's aping the look of, I've got no problem with it. If you can't discern the difference between a fake, a copy and an homage, you probably shouldn't be watching this video anyway. So if you are keen on one of these BLWRXs, you will find a link in the description of the video below. You can pick one up on Amazon for 219 US dollars and you certainly get a chunk of watch for your cash. So as a deep sea sea dweller homage, it has the same enormous gargantuan dimensions as the Rolex upon which it is based. 44 millimeters in diameter, 16 and a half mil thick. So it is a big chunky thing. 52 mil lug tip to lug tip, 22 mil lug width, although it only tapers down to 20 and then back up to 21 and a half at the clasp. Certainly less taper than I have criticized the, the Rolex for. And the weight, let's pop it on the scales. 210 grams and that's sized up for my seven inch wrist. And to be honest, I probably took one more link out of it than I should have. If you like your watches big and chunky, you will not be disappointed by this one. 316L stainless steel case, crown, bezel and bracelet. Bracelet features solid links with push pins, solid end links and a, a milled clasp. I'll show you that in just a second or two. 120 click unidirectional rotating dive time bezel as you would expect from a dive watch and it is a ceramic bezel fully loomed. Now I'll pop up the loom shot early with this one. Loom is actually all right, BGW9 or an approximation of it, it's got that bright blue color, again aping Rolex's own chroma light loom and it fades reasonably well. It fades as you would hope with the hands hanging in last of all. That's what you really want to see. You want to see the hands hanging on a bit longer than the rest of the dial and the bezel insert. Finishing is pretty good. I certainly have no complaints about that for the money. Nice horizontal brush there on the side of the case and a reasonable attempt at integrating the finish of the lugs with the, the bracelet end links. Not a lot of definition on those end links and these are just painted, I'll show you in just a second. But fairly well color matched at least with the, the S and G look, the G on the bezel, the crown, and those mid links of the end links and the mid links of the links. The dial is pretty much pure Rolex. Printed with the BLWRX and the professional 1000 meters water resistance automatic. The indices are applied again in the Rolex style with the triangle at 12, the big baton at six and circular indices all the way around. We've got a date cut out for the date at the, the three o'clock as well. 
Mercedes hands, reasonable uh, textures to those ones. They're not too bad at all. They're certainly not bottom of the range, as you can see, a little bit of a, a bevel edge in the middle and that nice lollipop and counterbalance on the second hand. Now, as advertised on the Riho chapter ring there, helium escape valve, 547 fathoms, and that is the helium escape valve on the opposite side to the crown. And the crown itself is actually quite impressive. Nicely machined, easy to grip. It's etched with LB, is that Linbo? I'm not really quite sure. But threads nicely, and unlike a lot of NH35 powered watches, it re-threads very nicely as well. And covering that distinctly Rolex-like dial is a piece of domed sapphire crystal. Nice bit of distortion there. Apparently, it is enormously thick. It's about four mil thick to help it cope with the, the pressures required to be a 1,000 meter water resistance watch. And there's a little bit of AR coating you can see, a little bit of purpley blue tinge to this one also. Bracelet, as noted, is pretty decently finished. Solid links, push pins. Now I remember the Beast Neymar breaking a couple of uh, pin removers, but this one I had no difficulties with it at all. Maybe they've done something about that. Solid end links. The clasp is nothing special. BLWRX just printed on there. We've got a few micro adjusts, double push safety, and it is indeed a, a decent mill clasp. Unspectacular, but decent for the money. Popping a link to show you those solid end links and the stainless steel screw down case back. Now it is Rolex style, so you're not gonna use the $2 tools with these one. It is a bit of a specialist equipment. I guess you're not gonna be taking the back off this one all that often, just advertising that it's a diver. 1,000 meters of claimed water resistance, uh, allegedly professional. And contained within is the ubiquitous Seiko NH35, hacking hand winding, 24 joule, 42 hour power reserve, 21,600 vibrations per hour, rugged, robust, reliable, and a fantastic inclusion for a watch at or around 200 US dollars. And there is the watch sitting on top of my seven inch wrist, nice and tight as noted. Perhaps I shouldn't quite have removed the last link, but it looks pretty good. I do like these silver and gold toned watches, the Submariner, there's the Tudor, and obviously this one as well. Probably best that you do it up tight, 212 grams, and a lot of that is in the head of the watch. When I reviewed the Sea Dweller earlier on this year, I criticized the, the previous model. I think it was the 11660. It bobbled all over the place because the band was just too thin, but thankfully, Bullworks have not done that. They've put a bit of a taper on there, but not too much of a taper. And there it is, zoomed out a little higher for perspective, 44 mil and 200 grams. You're not gonna forget that you put this one on in the morning, are you? And there is the big chunky monkey on wrist outside. As long as you do it up tight, it actually fits reasonably well considering its bulk. Not sure how much AR coating they've used on that domed sapphire crystal, but it is an attractive dial. The nice color combination of a little bit of creamy white, the gilt and the black makes it look, I think, pretty decent for the money. Moans and niggles then. Well, you already know whether a, a giant Rolex homage with the letters B, L, W, R and X on the dial floats your boat or not. Assuming that it does, there isn't really much wrong with this watch for 220 odd dollars. I mean, don't expect gold capping on these mid links. As you can see there, it is just painted on and they didn't paint the edges, but in reality, you can't see it when it's on wrist. And as noted, if you are a tinkerer, you're gonna be struggling tinkering with this one because of this slightly unusual case back that they've chosen to put on it, aping the Rolex style. I just wish that perhaps if they had wanted to rebrand Neymar, they'd have come up with something a little more engaging than that random collection of letters. Let's be honest, BLWRX, it'll get you a high score in Scrabble, but it's not really what you wanna see on the dial of your watch, is it? So there you have it, what's in a name? Indeed, Neymar, BLWRX, regardless of which of these watches you choose, you're certainly getting a lot of watch for not an awful lot of money, especially if you want something big, chunky, and heavy on your wrist. But if a company is gonna go to the effort of rebranding, perhaps they should have picked something that rolls off the tongue a little easier than Bulwarks. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.